Merry Horm I mean uh Christmas, Merry Christmas. Ho 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 Now welcome to Guess What? You're wrong, the holiday edition. Ho 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 Now this season, Big D is gonna tackle some holiday horror favorites and some that may just be horrible. <laughs> Enjoy the show while you can. Now before we get into this episode too far, I just got a little disclaimer here. First off, all audio used in this podcast is used under the protection of fair use. And as with all the movie reviews that I do here on Guess What? You're Wrong. We're going to spoil the hell out of every single thing we talk about. So, you have been warned. Please, listen. I must tell you something to all of you. It started with the wind. On a cold winter night, much like this, it was almost Christmas, but this Christmas was darker, less cheerful. But I still believed in Santa, in magic and miracles, and the hope that we could find joy again. But our village had given up on miracles and on each other. They had forgotten the spirit of Christmas, the sacrifice of giving. And my family was no different. I tried to help them to believe again, but we were no longer the loving family I remembered. They too had given up, and eventually so did I. And for the first time, I didn't wish for a miracle. I wished for them to go away. I wish I would come to regret. And that night, in the darkness of a howling blizzard, I got my wish. I knew St. Nicholas was not coming this year. Instead, it was a much darker, more ancient spirit. The shadow of St. Nicholas. It was Krampus. And as he had for thousands of years, Krampus came not to reward, but to punish, not to give but to take me and his helpers. I could only listen as they dragged my family into the underworld, knowing that I would be next. But Krampus didn't take me that night. He left me as a reminder of what happens when hope is lost, when belief is forgotten, and the Christmas spirit dies. Hello and welcome back to another Shadow of St. Nicholas-inspired episode of Guess What? You're Wrong. Now today, <laughs> I have LJ with me. Hello. And uh, we are diving headfirst into a spectacular movie from 2015, Krampus. But before we get into that, LJ, how have you been? Um, okay. This movie is like eight years ago. <laughs> so what we did yesterday, we actually went to this pizza joint up in uh, Holly Springs called Acme Pizza. pizza. Chicago-style pizza, actually. I thought, what did you think? It was good. 
Good. I just you can't. don't like that deep dish stuff too much, do you? Yeah, but it's still good. You like that New York style. And one thing was, Amy was our our waitress. That was her name, um, I believe. And when we got there, there was pretty much nobody there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what happened soon after we got there? A bunch of soccer players came. So the whole soccer team showed up. And but Amy held up pretty good, didn't she? Yeah. You know, um, I, I could have swore I was like, I told and I told you, I was like, this is it's kind of rude when you have a huge party like this. I mean, there was probably 30 people. And they were very, very short staffed, but it's kind of rude. If you're coming in with a big party like that, you should always call ahead and say, hey, we're coming here with a whole bunch of people. Can you handle it? Right. Yeah. But but it doesn't seem like they did that. But Amy held it pretty good. And uh, she did She did really good. The service was not actually lacking that much, which just surprised me because I, I thought for sure when this happened that uh, everybody else's service was going to go down. But it didn't really. So that, that was pretty good. I like that. The garlic and were yummy. Oh, yeah. The Acme Pizza Joint up in uh, Holly Springs, North Carolina. Check them out. Awesome Chicago deep dish style pizza. They also have New York style, I think, or a yeah. regular flat pizza. I don't know if well, it was New York style. New York style. You can you can get your own personal um Chicago style. Chicago style. Deep dish. Yeah. I thought it was delicious. I would have wanted some more stuffing in there, but it was wait, good I, I was gonna say deep dish and I'm like, wait, isn't deep dish New York style? And I'm like, oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> so Krampus here. It's a Christmas story. It's a Christmas movie. Why right? are we talking about pizza? Because <laughs> it's good stuff. I'm telling you. Um, now, a boy, this is a synopsis, a boy has a bad Christmas, wait, a boy who has a bad Christmas accidentally summons a festive demon to his family home. Uh, that, that's the IMD, IMDB synopsis, and it does not actually describe this movie at all, really. Yeah. <laughs> the movie was directed by Michael Doherty. When you say that, when you say that a description, it just sounds like it's a 30-minute movie. Uh, the movie does start Adam Scott as Tom, the ever, ever awesome Tony Collette as Sarah. And of course, Uncle Howard. Uncle Howard was kind of a douche nozzle, really. <laughs> um, David Kochner. Uh, Allison Tolman played Linda. MJ Anthony played Max. He's the one that actually makes the wish. Well, is it really a wish? He's the one who has more spirit than anyone else. Yeah. Um, Stephanie Levy Owen plays Beth. And my favorite, Krista Stadler, who plays Omi. She was pretty cool. Yeah. I liked Omi. Um, of course, you had Kuchata Pharrell as Aunt Dorothy. Maverick Flack as Howie Jr. Queenie Samuel. Oh, boy. She looks kind of ugly, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Mm-mm. Um, and Luke Hawker plays Krampus. Now, that was CGI. Had you seen this movie before? Yeah, we yeah. have. I love this movie. I thought, I, now, as far as the depiction of the actual Krampus story, it's not very accurate. It's still good, though. Um, but you, you dive into the movie itself. And, and it's, a, it's a legendary pictures movie. Same people that make the new Godzillas, right? It's a decent movie. It's, it's not terrible. Right? It's not like someone just got up like five words of Krampus and just threw it up <laughs> into a movie. That's right. You know, it's, mm-hmm. um, they take the basic concept of Krampus, um, which, remember when you were little, you used, to, I wasn't, you always told me, don't talk about Krampus. Don't talk about him. <laughs> you were, you were afraid of Krampus. <clears throat> but it's a good story. Um, so overall, the movie starts off. Pretty lame. I mean, it's pretty it's a family. But it does go kind of fast. It starts off really fast, kind of. Well, it starts off slow, but, but, it, it, but it picks fast. up. As soon as we start, anybody that has big families can, can uh, really um, associate with the beginning of this movie. You know, we have this nice tight family, you know, the, the brother, sister, mom and dad, and the Omi, the grandmother. In the house, and they're preparing for, you know, Christmas, Christmas dinner. Yeah. And um, you can just feel the tension growing, the stress. You're like, oh, my gosh. The fighting. And then when the family, when everybody else shows up, dude, first one. Well, actually, I think it's just, it's only one. It's the 
Tony Collette's sister. I honestly don't think any of them wanted to be there. Yeah, they were all. Yeah, Sarah's sister, Linda, and her family show up, which is Howard and the girls, Stevie and Jordan and Howie Jr. And then the baby. They left the baby in the car when they got there. You're going to die. Oh, my gosh. dude! This movie, it makes you think. One of the things that I think about is family. Oh, smooth move, x lax Yeah, I do. <laughs> you haven't grown up with a, with a huge family like this. When I grew up, we were always, you know, for holidays, we'd be going to, to visit aunts and uncles, and it was always huge, big deal. And it was always 20, 30 people around. And it was sometimes it was hectic, and sometimes it was people that didn't get along, and sometimes there was a lot of fighting, especially when people started drinking and the uncles would start fighting. That was always fun. Um, but this, we see this in this movie here, you know, when the family, uh, the sister and her family and everybody, and then they, they bring um, Aunt Dorothy, which I evidently Aunt Dorothy is. Nobody really likes. An idiot. Yeah, she's complains about everything, and first thing she wants to do is start getting drunk. Wow! Get some eggnog, put some alcohol. Go, go, go! What do you know about alcohol? Anyway, so this is actually, I think, the first podcast I recorded in the morning. That's weird. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, I guess it's afternoon now. It's eleven twenty-two. Anywho, tell me about Max, LJ. He's like the only one who actually has hope. And he's, he broke his chance of actually getting not to die. Well, kind of, basically. That's what, um, because he had, he had written a letter to Santa Claus, right? And then. And, and we see from Max in this point here that he's actually a caring and loving kid. It's kind of odd these days. We have a kid that cares as much about family and stuff. What were those, some of the things that he was asking for in his Christmas, in his letter to Santa? He wanted his family to, to get along. Better, yeah. And he wanted uh, his uncle, um, Howard and Linda, to get them some help so that way they could have a better life, too. So he was very caring and kid, very caring yeah. kid for the rest of his family. Um, but then what did Jordan and Stevie do during dinner? They took his letter and they were idiots. So they, they made fun of him, you know, and it was, it, it's just something that was just mean and rotten, right? And I mean, during the whole dinner, everybody was complaining, you know, it was like everybody came over to Tom and Sarah's house. At and, that point, Max just lost hope. Yeah. Well, not yet. Because remember, he, he grabbed his letter back and he ran up to his room and his dad came up and talked to him. But then you did. Yeah. And at first he was kind of like, yeah, okay. But then he just was like, the heck with it. I'm, everybody made, made me mad. Everybody pissed me off. So he rips up his letter, throws it out the window. Flies. He's like, the heck is that? Yeah, it actually flew up into the air. That was kind of crazy. It flew up into the sky. Instead of like just floating away in, in the wind, it just flew up into the sky for real. It really just went to heaven. And what immediately happens? <laughs> It starts snowing a lot, like a blizzard. The yeah. big blizzard. Huge blizzard comes out. And um Everybody just thinks it's natural. Like that that's that's a thing that's just weird. Like blizzard can't just happen out of, like out of nowhere. Well this movie was ready PG thirteen. Are you thirteen yet? No. Oh my goodness. Um now the film was originally to release November 25th, but was pushed back to December 4th to coincide with Krampusnacht, which is a traditional German festival held on December 5th that celebrates the Krampus coming to punish naughty children. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's raining outside, isn't it? Good, so, good ambiance. <laughs> <laughs> can't even hear it. What are you, with all these big words? What's going on with you? Um... So at this point here, Omi no, Omi's like, oh, something's up. She knows what's happening. She's like, she feels the force. She she knows what's happening. She doesn't want to tell her family because she doesn't want them to freak out. She's kind of like Yoda. She's like, she knows. I am good. It's coming, Krampus is. Is that what he would say? Something like that? Yeah. So, yeah, Omi knows. And 
throughout the movie, I mean, Omi, obviously, it's a it's a German word for like grandma. Like he would say, Mima, Nana, that kind of stuff. You know, he would say Omi. Oh. And um, so Omi knows what's going on. She's she she's she, they show her. She like looks around like something's up, something's amiss. You know, right? Yeah. Right. She's suspicious. She's very sus. Sus. But uh, this is when, you know, all their cell phones stop working. There's no, the electricity goes out, too. The only thing working is a tablet. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah, it had a battery that ch- was charged, and eventually it does die. Wait, can't they just get portable chargers? They could, but that's that's what, you know, um, that's why, the, and uh, what's his name? The husband asked Tony Collette's character, well, if you happen to get me a portable charger or a backup generator, now's the time to... No, nah, he didn't. But, you know, cell phone service goes down, and you see it. They show up. They pan up, and they show the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Everything goes black. All the power everywhere goes out. And it's really weird. Because that was um, one of the things you asked. You said, well, what, what happens But the other people in the other houses? They get frozen. <laughs> we found out because it was a guy. It was a delivery guy, the DHL delivery guy, right? He was frozen inside of his truck. Like, you, you know, like, whenever you watch a movie, you don't really get it, but then the second time you watch it, you do? That's what happened. Yeah. They um, froze him in there. So everybody else in the neighborhood basically, I'm guessing it's like frozen in time kind of deal, right? Yeah. But then what if everything gets messed up? Won't they know? Probably not. Because, I mean, they're frozen, basically like a frozen in time type of deal. So... They'll just think that, oh my god, this happened out of nowhere. So I wonder if everybody else went back to normal after the... Yeah, we'll get to the end of the movie in a minute. But um, that's when... Uh, what's her name? The daughter? Remember her name was? Liz? Or I don't know. It was something. Let's see. Yeah, Beth. Oh. That's when Beth decides. She goes, I need to go over and check on my boyfriend because he's not answering his text messages. She's now, an idiot. <laughs> now, I'd be like, no, you ain't going nowhere. This is a blizzard. Now, when I was a wee boy living in Ohio, I lived through a blizzard. Now, you've never experienced a blizzard because you're just young. But I think I believe it was in like 78, blizzard of 78. What? Um, I was about four or five years old or probably four. And I remember the snow being so high. But at the time, I'm four or five, so I'm short anyway. But I remember the snow being so high that it was piled up above our door. So we couldn't even get out of the house. Electricity did go out. I remember Mima um, went into the sink, and you know how inside the oven there's the grates. Yeah. She took she took those metal grates out and she put it over the sink, and she caught a fire in the sink. And she cooked over it. How? Because we were we had no electricity. No, but how 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 over the sink that would work? Oh, because it it just creates it's like a fire pit. Put a little bit of fire down there, and you we basically she was just heating up soup. Is basically what we were eating. She didn't like make a four course meal or nothing like that. It was just you know heating up some soup. Some soupy. What soup was it? Probably chicken noodle. I'm watching you keep messing with the microphone, and I'm wondering why don't you just leave it alone? I'm trying to sit straight. <laughs> but, but yeah, we, I lived through a, a blizzard when I was a wee boy. What the heck is a wee boy? I was a little a little turd bird. You know what wee boy means. But uh, so. Beth heads out because she needs to go check on her boyfriend. Stupid, stupid idea, right? Because um, as she's walking, she sees something on top of a house. And what does she see? Krampus. Krampus. Yeah, he's jumping from house to house. I think that might be the picture of the movie. Like yeah. when that happens. When he's up on the, on the top of the house, yeah. And she tries to hide underneath this uh, car. This, yeah, this truck, truck whatever. And um, this is the first time we actually see Krampus's feet, the you know the hooves, walking around the outside of the of the truck. And she, he leaves her a present. What kind of a present does Krampus leave for Beth? A little music box that has, I don't know, it's like a little doll. Jack in a box. Yeah, but doll it, in a box. But it's a demonic Jack in a box. Demonic killer murderer Jack in the box. Very ugly, too. Okay, so Michael Doherty actually describes the Krampus in this film as Santa Claus's shadow. 
He's not the unstoppable monster that kicks down your door and rampages and grabs you. There's something darkly playful about him. He's having a good time doing what he does, and he enjoys the cat and mouse aspect of it, the playing, you know, the running and... That's messed up. It is kind of demented a little bit, isn't it? Um, so, it's at this point here, it's been so long, right? And Max is like, uh, Mom, Dad, that's not back yet, dude. And this is what I'm thinking... You know, the mom and dad should have been like, uh, she was only supposed to be gone for an hour and it's been like five. Um, maybe maybe be a little bit worried, right? Yeah. But they're, I don't know what they're thinking about, but it's Max that comes down and is like, hey, uh, it's almost dark or it is dark and that's not back yet. Then they start getting worried. They've been worried a long time ago, right? Honestly, I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to say something. I don't remember. Oh, wow. Kids these days, I'm telling you. What do you mean? You were a kid. We're getting stuff in all the time. You're uh, you're the old one. Anyway, so we move on to Godzilla minus one. Oh, wait. I mean, Krampus. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Says the one who's forgetting. You're saying that I'm forgetting and you're talking about Godzilla minus one. I did that on purpose. Turd bird. No, you don't. <laughs> so it's at this point here that... Uh, when uh, who was it? Howard and I can't remember the dad's name. What was the dad's name again? Tom. Dad's name was Tom. So oh, this is yeah. when Tom and Howard decided to go off on an expedition because Uncle Howie has this Humvee, a Hummer. He packs a shotgun and a revolver. That's pretty good. It was like a, it was a, it was a nice. Uh, I, I don't care for Hummers that much. I don't even. I don't know. I wouldn't own one myself. I don't. That's just me though. But the shotgun, the revolver, those were nice. I like those. But yeah, so they head out. They get in the Hummer and they go. There's no radio stations. They can't get any radio stations at all. And that's that should be a clue that something's up. They're trying to know where they're just driving. They go in this house and yeah, they get sucked up. So now, well, at this point here, we don't. Not, nobody except for Omi really knows that something supernatural is going on. Well, not supernatural. Really. Yeah, it's kind of like other otherworldly. Demonic, or it's not really demonic because Max made the wish, right? Yeah, so it's not really demonic, it's just, um, it's the comeuppance that are ready to come back and make everybody pay for being naughty. Consequences, yeah. So, at this point, here, you know, if I'm out driving around in a snowstorm. And no radio stations will come in at all. You gotta even, know something's happening. Not even the AM stations. Nothing's coming in. And then they find this uh, snowplow driver, right? Frozen. And they don't even... The, the driver's not in this one. Remember the window was oh, broken in? Yeah. Something had busted into the window and taken him out. All they did was they found uh, the door open and some pictures and stuff in their presence. They don't even do anything. Dude, I've been like, uh... They're just like, ah, oh, everything's fine. Someone just broke in this car. Yeah. It's time to... Well, this is... I think this is actually when... This is when Howard... When Uncle Howard gets pulled into the snow. Yeah. Something's yanking on him. Dude. I kind of wish we got to see that. I don't... And he still doesn't... I don't know. If something pulls you into the snow and is biting your leg, because he's blooded. His leg is all busted, you know, bitten and stuff. You gotta know something's happening. And he's just like, nah. Yeah. It's all normal. It's fine. Even when, you know, they, they make it back to the house and Omi tells the story about Krampus and when she was a little girl and what happened. You know, basically all hope, Krampus is what happens when all hope is gone and the spirit of Christmas fades away. Krampus comes. Um, she tells the story and in Uncle Howard, his legs all chewed up by something in the snow. Right. And their son, Howie Jr. just got sucked up the chimney. Um, but he still doesn't believe the story that Omi tells. I'm like, dude, are you, are you serious? Right? So next thing, next thing, there's go he's going to come. He's going to kill your family. And then you're going to be like, nah, I still don't believe the story. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't believe until like, what, one hour, 30 minutes? Until he doesn't really believe it until he falls asleep and the fire goes out. That's one thing Omi says. Keep the fire burning hot. Keep the fire burning hot. Nothing can come down the chimney. But at, no, this is actually when uh, Howie Jr. gets taken up the chimney. So even after that point, he fell asleep. 
He's supposed to be watching guard. He still doesn't believe in the story. I'm like, dude, and he doesn't really, I think, I, I think he doesn't really actually start believing it until he gets attacked by gingerbread guys, man. Mm-hmm. Three of them. And this is when, oh, this is how they got in the house. I just thought about this. Um, because earlier in the movie, they had a delivery. Yeah. And they carried in that big, remember I told you, I was like, that's the Krampus bag. Yeah, and the, and the persons had the help. So, so the little gingerbread. demon things were inside that bag already. You didn't notice that? Oh, man. Yeah, I did. Of course I did. Of course I did. What are you talking about? Totally. <laughs> now, Krampus is a huge part of Austrian and German folklore. Uh, in Austria and southern Germany, they have Krampus runs, where grown-up men dress up as Krampuses and parade through the city streets and scare the chillins. <laughs> now, I might get a Krampus costume next year. Rawr. That'd be kind of cool. No. Fat Krampus. <laughs> what, did you just call me fat? <laughs> That's rude. What? How rude. I'm not rude. <laughs> oh, LJ, so what's going on? What do you got going on today? Nothing, really. No? Can we play some video games later? Yes, sir. <laughs> what's your favorite video game? Fortnite. Call of Duty? Ah, I like that game, too. Fortnite. I like to kill zombies. Fortnite. Zombies are fun to kill. Fortnite. Anyway, back to the movie. Mm, the microphone is tasty. <laughs> so, the, uh, and this is when, so the first part of the movie is kind of like just a normal Christmas movie, right? Family getting together and everybody complaining and fighting, but then it turns really quick. And when all the, when all the, you know, there's a fire, the tree burns down, um, the, uh, like, a lot of stuff happens very quickly. Yeah, Aunt Linda takes the presents up. I guess she, I, it almost looks like she's up in the attic. She takes the presents upstairs. And she's trying to clean them up because there was a fire, the tree burned. She's trying to rewrap the presents. But some of the presents look a little odd. They look old, old style, right? The boxes and stuff. I'm like, But she thinks nothing of it. And she goes down because, you know, they have an adult conversation. Oh, maybe um that bag. Maybe they thought, like, they ordered presents or something. Something, yeah. That's one of the things he said. The rich people get all the free stuff or whatever like that. But uh, she leaves. She goes downstairs because, you know, Howard and, I'm sorry, Tom and Sarah want to talk to Howard and Linda. Adult talk. You know, they got to make a plan. Um, and then you start seeing the presents start shaking and stuff. We know Bomb. there's something in there. It's trying to get out. Well, I'm pretty sure. What if she opened them instead of just, like, waiting? That would have been probably a big mistake, if you ask me. I know you didn't ask me, so anyway, move on to the next. Something that triggers me so much is whenever you see people in movies, like like they could do something that will save their life, but then they don't do it. They're just being absolute idiots. What do you mean triggers you? Nothing should trigger you. Sophia does. Kids these days, I'm telling you. Anyway. You act like a kid. The, uh, on to, um, what happens next? Wait, where are we at? Oh, you, the presents are opening up. Remember they went oh. on top? Um... This big, they go up to the attic, and then there's all those monsters there. Howard is stuck fighting tiny gingerbread men. Yeah, that's funny. They got the nail gun, and they start shooting at him. Why does he just shoot at them? What? He's a little bit freaked out. I mean, he doesn't. Wait, he doesn't believe any of this stuff. Whatever you know, fairy tale stuff. He says, "Bite their head off." So he turns around, and all of a sudden, he starts getting shot in the back with a nail gun. He Turns around and he sees some gingerbread men. I think he kind of freak out. You know, what the? That's not something that's supposed to happen. That gingerbread man was something you eat. Yeah. Wait a minute. The only reason they're working with Krampus is to eat him. What? They might be trying to eat him. Could be. Could be. Now, Omi, um, you know, is the only person in the movie that actually refers to Krampus by name. Krampus. Krampus, because she knows. She lived through it when she was itty bitty. So we get to this. Um, who, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Tom, Sarah, and Linda are upstairs. Oh, because they hear they hear the girls scream. The girls went to the bath to use the bathroom, right? Yeah, and then there's this big, like. Jack in the box. Yeah. That ate them, or ate one of them. I think the mini Jack in the box on um, that bath found was like a tiny version, like it's baby. Yeah. And it uh, it eats one of the one of the girls, and so they run upstairs and they 
starts shooting at it, and then it takes off running, trying to get into the the duct work. It just jumps like one of those fairy tale movies. But then there's so many other things that come out. You have the like the the tree topper angel that comes down and starts attacking people. You have this robot that comes out and starts attacking Tom. And what else is there? I think there's the tree topper angel. Was there anything else? Oh, the teddy bear. bear. The teddy bear. Oh my gosh. But uh, Linda right away gets a uh, icicle right in the teddy bear's eyeball. Owie. That was kind of ouch. And she grabs the gun and shoots the other stuff. Other stuff gets away. But the jack in the box gets away with uh, Jordan or. Yeah, I think it was Jordan. Was it Jordan? I think. And crawls way into the duck's work. Now, this is odd because Jordan is not a little kid. She's a big girl. I mean, like high school age, I guess. Junior high, maybe. I don't know. So the Jack and Box ate her. The Jack and Box is huge. You got to have some big duct work in your house. Exactly. Like, that thing to crawl around in there. Maybe it's infant. That <laughs> doesn't have Santa Claus magic. I'll tell you that. Dark magic. You know, so, you think they summon the underworld. You know, this is uh, a lot of stuff starts happening really quickly here. Um, rolling forward, you know, the big battle scenes. They eventually, all the adults and everybody congregate in that big family room at, toward the end here. And they end up pretty much, I think the only one that's left is that big Max. jack in a box. Oh. Um, and they kill the rest of the, you know, the teddy bear, the angel. I don't, they're not really dead, but they stop them for a minute. Um, but then the you hear, the hear a noise outside and the dark elves come in. That was kind of weird. You know, they mm-hmm. just start breaking in and a bunch of elves with these funny mum- mummers masks are popping in. And then Krampus just calls them and they're like... Everybody stops. Yeah, this is kind of cool. I like how the the last elf was just like... You know, this is an audio podcast. People can't see what he just did. <laughs> like, podcasts can also be video podcasts, too. Yeah, I know, but I'm not recording a video. <laughs> so... Uh, the culmination here is, you know, everybody starts getting taken away. Um, Tom, Sarah, Linda, I think it's just, is it, yeah, it's just, it's Max and Stevie. They're trying right? to drive the car. Yeah, they try to get, they said, we got to, we got to get to the, the snow plow. That's the only way out. If we can get it started. We'll and he's like, time. I don't even know how to drive this. <laughs> and then first thing Tom is like, I'm going to slow him down. Tom's the dad. You know, I got to take care of my flock. It's a big thing. So, He's like, go, run to the truck. I'll hold him off. And he's got the shotgun. And he's got this thing. And it's kind of like uh, in the snow. You can, you know, you can see it moving through the snow. And it surrounds him. And he shoots it and shoots Wait, it. Wait, could, could that be the Jack in the Box? Could be, I guess. Because it bit him. Too. Yeah, the Jack in the Box did have some very vicious teeth, didn't it? So it could be, actually. Not sure. But it, but could, it, have, it could have been the teddy bear because the teddy bear had, like, really big teeth. Well, the teddy bear's small, though. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, Tom gets taken. He's gone. So you have Sarah and, you know, Stevie, Max, and Linda trying to make it to the truck. Linda gets taken. Sarah gets Max and Stevie into the truck. Sarah gets taken. And it's just Max and Stevie, the two kids left. And then what happens? Stevie gets taken. I don't know how to drive. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to drive a stick. We have a Prius or we have a hybrid. He says. Um, so Stevie gets taken and Max runs out and meets Krampus face to face. And um, Krampus gives him the, or- the ornament. It says Krampus on the side. Is it a bell? Yeah. It's like a little jingle bell ornament kind of thing. Um, and Max understands that. Wow. Everybody's gone. It's my fault. So he picks up that bill and he runs. He, he can see where you know everybody's at and everything. He goes and he wants to take it back. He says, I take back my wish. So in the beginning of the movie, it wasn't it wasn't just that he was upset and he and he ripped up his note and threw it away. He actually made a wish that all this that everything would be taken away. And that and that's what uh, this kind of shows you is that shouldn't wish for things that you don't really want. Be careful for what you wish for. Absolutely, absolutely. So even though, you know, he goes to Krampus, he, he throws the, the, 
that Krampus bell ornament at him. At Krampus is like, I take my wish back. I want my family back. Krampus comes and um, Max tells Krampus, bring everybody back. Just take me. Now, that is the ultimate sacrifice, really. I mean, um, that's the ultimate. You're giving up your, you're willing to give up yourself, your life, just to save everybody else. And it's at this point in the movie, I thought that Krampus was going to be like, hmm, this kid is, uh, has learned his lesson. And I thought that they were going to bring everything back to normal. But no. There's a big, huge fire pit opens up in the ground. They throw Stevie in. They throw Max in. And what happens? Take me to the next so step. He wakes up in his bed. He, he falls at, out of his bed. At home. He falls out of his bed, and uh, he's kind of stunnified and amazed-cated. Ah! What's going on? What happened? Looks outside. There's lights on everywhere. It's still snowy, but he knows. Okay. It's a bad dream. Just a bad dream. Uh, he goes downstairs. Um, and the whole family is gathered around in the family room, around the tree and everything. And everybody's, have, everybody's like, oh, it's about time you woke up. We've been waiting forever. Because it's Christmas Day. They went and, you know, opened up some presents. Everybody's having a good time. Everybody's having fun. Max is actually happy. He's looking around because the family that we saw at the beginning of the movie, it's not the same family. I mean, they're the same people, but they're actually getting along. People are loving you, each other, you know. Everybody's happy, and it's just like they used to be. Now, ultimately, that, that was Max's wish, right? I wish this family could be like it used to be. And he got his wish, right? Until he, he opens up his present, and it's that Krampus bell. And everybody's like, everybody starts, oh, crap. Everybody starts hearing things. Everybody starts remembering little stuff. And they're like, oh, no. And they pan, they pan back, Mm-mm. and what do we see? It's a bunch of snow globes. We see that uh, this family was actually taken by Krampus. And what he does when he takes a family, he puts them in a snow globe. And so all as they as they pan back through uh, this Krampus's lair, I guess you could say, you see snow globes everywhere. Still all kinds of snow. Up. So throughout the centuries, Krampus has taken a lot of people. So my question is then, does that mean that Max and his family now are going to be living in an eternal Christmas? Every day is Christmas because they're in a snow globe. They can't leave and go home. But how do they see the other, their neighbors then if they're in a snow globe? Well, it's because Krampus put that little neighborhood inside the snow globe. So I guess they could technically go around their neighborhood, but it would always be winter. Those were in a snow globe. Maybe it could be like the, like, like they have each their own little world. Like each of their own little world is in, in, is in a snow globe. Like maybe it's big, but you just it just looks small from the outside. Yeah, I thought so. In Max's room, you can spot toys of Gypsy Danger and Leatherback um, from Legendary Pictures Pacific Rim. Oh, uh, I, did, I I thought about I, I thought those things looked familiar when I saw them. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything here that describes about the. Um, oh, it said that um Ami, um Omi, yeah, um, Max's advent calendar was seen in. Oh, me story. Yeah. Nice. So, I guess they don't actually say anything about the snow globes. Interesting. That's one thing I'd, I'd like to know. Delve further into the, the people that are in these snow globes. Do they just live an eternal Christmas from that point on? Every every movie that they come out, there's like, oh my God. Like, th- there's lore. Oh my God. Is this real? Like, what's happening? Now, there is a lot of lore uh, with Krampus. And Krampus, actually, the story of Krampus is that, you know, the good kids, the kids that were obedient and obeyed their parents, got a visit from St. Nicholas, Santa Claus. Got gifts and presents and candy and sweets. Kids that were bad, that were naughty, that didn't listen, <clears throat> that didn't listen, got a visit from Krampus, got coal in their stockings, and got whoopings. And the worst of the worst got taken by Krampus, got shoved in his sack, his bag, so that way he could feast on them. Is it infinite? Is it an infinite bag, or is it just a bag? Yeah, 
just shove kids in there, take them back to his lair, and he had kids too. Oh, nom, nom, nom. Nummies, 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 nummies. LJ, Krampus. Overall, what'd you think about the movie? It was good. Yeah. I, I didn't, like, the beginning was, I'm like, what? What the heck? What the heck's happening? But it, it picks up, you know, when we, when we start seeing. Overall, like, every movie goes slow in the beginning, but it went kind of fast. A little bit faster. Picked up a little bit. Now, to me, this is a decent movie. It's a good movie. Um, it's a good Christmas movie. Yeah, I think uh, I would. I personally would have liked it if they would have delved a little bit further into the Krampus lore. Um, and I definitely think that this is a a movie that Legendary Pictures could have made way se- better sequels. They can make sequels, make a part two, part three, part four, and. You know, include different families. But um, maybe like some of the old families. And then delve into that lore a little bit more of, of actual Krampus lore. They should they should have made like a part two so then you can see like what happened to the family and all that. We can see what happened. I want to learn more about these snow globes. I'm telling you. But uh, that's it. That's I, th- the movie. I think I think the whole movie just becomes snow globes now. Yeah. That's it. That's the movie. That's Krampus. From what year did it come out? 2004. 15. 15. Well, you, you weren't even born yet. No, I was. 2015. Is it? Yeah, I was born in 2013. 13? Oh, my gosh. Am I that old that I forget stuff? <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah. Krampus from 2015. At that point, LJ was two years old. <laughs> Titty twister. Ow. So, good movie. It All in all. And it, I just saw... They were just showing a little clip here on the screen here. I saw at the beginning of the movie, we do see the uh, Black Friday madness. You know, they show people fighting and stuff in stores for stuff. And that just, I don't understand that. You know, that's something that uh, I covered with uh, Kelvin when we, when we covered uh, Thanksgiving, the new Eli Roth movie. Boy, people go crazy on Black Friday. Nuts, I tell you. But that's it. That is Krampus. 2015. How long was the movie? Would you recommend it? Yeah, it's good. An hour, about an hour, an hour and a half. Thirty eight minutes. Yeah. So, it's a good movie. Check it out. It's a good Christmas ad if you like. It's a good Christmas horror movie. Yeah, and, and it's kid friendly. So kid-friendly. there are some Christmas horror movies out there that you should not w- let your kids watch, but this one is pretty kid friendly. A little creepy, a little bit scary at times. But all in all, a good movie. With that, everybody, sweet dreams, love, peace, and... Chicken grease. Chicken grease. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with Big D and me and listening to him while he dove into this cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> you all have a happy holiday and until next time, sleep well. Later, Tanner. This concludes our broadcast day. Good night, and God bless America.